The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... in part by Buick Motor Division and True Value Hardware Stores. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Genius. Who can account for genius? A genius can be born at any time, in any place, to anyone. And all we can really say about geniuses is that they are not like the rest of us. And because geniuses happen to be different, they usually suffer the fate of all who are different. Because in any society, the worst of all crimes is to be different. Enough of philosophy. Let us meet a gentleman named Bridges Barzell. Uh, before we begin, uh, why, sir, are you named Bridges? Why? It's one of them things. In the old days, I'd go over by the East River in New York, you know, and I'd wait for a hit. And just as soon as I'd spot some hayseed rubbernecking the Brooklyn Bridge, I'd hit him with a proposition. You know what I mean? I can't even remember how many times I sold that bridge. But them days are gone. Long gone. Today, the rubes are as smart as you or I. It's tougher to make the living today. But who are you going to complain to? Well, on this particular day, I'm strolling along Broadway, and I see a familiar face. Those deep blue eyes, that honey blonde hair, just everything about it gorgeous. Even her eyebrows. Now, you figure you have to be stuck on a dame if you can make a symphony even about her eyebrows. But can it be? How can she look so good after all these years? And then I hear that voice. Bridget! I take a deep breath. I try to be, uh, you know, kind of uh, offhand. And I say, why, it's simple. Yes, Bridget. Well, well, and my, my. How, how are things proceeding, Dimple? Oh, as you predicted. Oh, Bridget, you were a true prophet. Now, just a second. I don't seem to recall. That... You, you said it wouldn't work. Oh, well, uh, how's Leonard? He's gone, Bridget. He's gone. You mean he walked out on you? Oh, no. He's around, but he's gone. He's around, but he's gone? Dimples, you just lost him. Oh, I lost you a long time ago. I, I had to choose between you and Leonard, and I chose Leonard. I never do anything right. Sometimes I think I don't know anything. No, Dimples, not you. You always knew what time it was. Oh. I'm in another world. What kind of other world? Can you tell me? I, I want to tell you, but I, I, I'm scared to tell you. Why? Because you think I'm crazy. Let me tell you about Dimples. 
she used to dance in the floor show of a nightclub on 52nd Street. Back when we used to have nightclubs. Today, you got discotheques. It ain't the same thing. Dimples was my girl. And a guy named Leonard was my best friend. So, I introduced my best friend to my girl. Well, you've seen this picture before, haven't you? Anyhow, me and Dimples are now sitting in this joint 20 years later. Why are you staring at me, Bridget? Look, I ain't doing too good at this point in time, Dimples, but still, I can leave you have a couple of hundred. Oh, no, Bridget, this isn't a touch. Well, and all, you could use the dough. I don't need any. Dimples. Dimples, that coat of yours, the sleeves are a little bit frayed. Look, you, your nails are short. You got smudges on your fingers. Uh, all right, Bridget. You're finding a typewriter, maybe? Maybe. Oh, you had to take a civilian job, huh? Well, I'm too old to dance, Bridget. What's with Leonard in you, anyway? You said he was gone, then you said he was here. Well, he, he's both. Uh-huh. And I know it sounds crazy. When I say here, I mean he, he's in the house. Well, then he can't be gone. Oh, how can I explain this, Bridget? He isn't gone as far as space is concerned, but he's gone in time. What do you mean, where is he gone in time? <laughs> he's gone into the 16th century. And now I'm gone. I told you you think I was crazy. No, 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 no. no. Uh, keep going. Why, why, why don't we just start at the beginning? Well, it, it began with the guru. The guru? This, this wise man from India. Oh, right off. We know we got a hustle. Oh, that's just it. I'm not sure. I hope it's a hustle because if it isn't, then... Then what? Well, then all bets are off on anything. Tell me about this guru. All right. It's a nice spring day. Leonard and I, we, the two of us, were walking down Fifth Avenue. And we're saying, oh, you could only get a day like this in New York in May. Get to the guru. Oh, here we are. Just enjoy the air. Sure, why not? It's free. And all of a sudden... Leonard squeezes my arm and says... Hey, yeah. Uh, hey, look. Uh, what? Come on towards you. Oh, who? This character, this barefoot clown. Hmm? I, I, I don't see a clown. The one wearing the burlap robe with the long stringy hair and the scraggly beard. Get a good look. Why should I? He's the guru. Uh, number one, what guru? Number two, who cares? He is the guru. Sri Huri Chumbap Mukherjee. You read about him in all the papers. See him on the TV, hear him on the radio. Everybody comes to him. For what? Wisdom. Everybody goes to him for uh, uh, enlightenment. Uh, and do they get it? Sure. And while he enlightens them, he also lightens their wallets. <laughs> Why don't I learn his racket? So where are you going? I'm, uh... I'm going to put a few moves on this character. Leonard, come back here. Oh, Guru. Great one. I bow before you. Well, thank you. I too am a prisoner of the day. Ah, great master. I seek enlightenment. Enlightenment. It is beautiful. Enlightenment. The true quick silver of the universe. Uh, may I come to you, Master, and seek wisdom? Yes. You may come to me. All who are troubled may come to me. You mean Leonard actually stopped this guy on the street? I, I couldn't understand it. But, I don't know, something was bothering him. What? I don't know. He'd get moody and he'd say, I've got close up inside me, something that must be free. I never heard Leonard talk like that. Bridget, would you do something for me? Would you come home with me and, and talk to Leonard? Well, what could I tell Leonard? Well, you're the kind of person, I don't know, just talking to you can make people feel better. Is that a fact? Oh, sure. Look at me. Well, I feel better already. All right. All right, Lee, let's go and see what it's doing with Leonard. Oh, Bridget, I, I better tell you right now. Be prepared for a different kind of Leonard. Leonard, I'm home. Uh, just be quick. 
prepared for anything. Anything? Like what? I don't even know. Oh, Leonard, we, we have a guest. Ah, look, uh, buongiorno. We are well met. There is much to be done. The lawsuit. Uh, uh, Leonard? Uh, how are you? W- what did you call me? Huh? Oh, Hey, 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 it's you, Bridges, Bridges, after all these years. Hey, great to see you. Uh, no hard feelings, though. Well, there's hard feelings, but we've got to learn to live with them. Hey, still up to your old tricks, sir. Huh? Well, you know what they say about old dogs. <laughs> hey, Dimples, why don't you make us some coffee, huh? All right. I know you boys want to chat. Well, uh... <clears throat> How's tricks, Leonard? Oh... I have a few political problems, Luca. But you know about those. Now, wait a minute. Why, why do you call me Luca? Huh? Oh, yeah. Why, why, why do I... Yeah, I, I think they keep going back and forth. You, 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 you just have to disregard a great many things I say. Now, what is this Dimples is telling me? You giving her a hard time? Well, how much did she tell you? Well, nothing I could really hold on to. What's all this about you in the 16th century? Oh, and, and and what's with this uh, this guru hustler? Hey, you should go see him, Bridges. Yeah, sure. So I can become as nutty as you, huh? Come on, Leonard. What's it all about? Well, let's talk a bit. Do you know who you are? All right, I'll play straight, man. I'm Bridges Barzell. Nah. No? Bridges Barzell is who you think you are. Oh. We're going to play this kind of game. Now, I mean, you and I, what were we? Hustlers, flip-flam artists, con guys, right? Keep going. We made a nice buck. Why? Because we were smart, huh? Well, maybe a little. But why were there always so many suckers? Do you know why it's so easy to trim suckers? I never said it was easy. Oh, it is. It's because everybody, yeah, everybody is, is, is seeking something. Seeking desperately for something. And you know what that something is? You know me, I'm a great straight man. Go ahead, tell me, Leonard. What is that something? Everybody is seeking the self. The self. All right, you see, we're born. We die. But what is born? What dies? Look, Leonard, this is getting a little too deep. Everybody has a master life. You follow this? Not really. The master life. It is that incarnation during which he has discovered the totality of uh, existence. I'm lost, Leonard. Lost. The spirit, having achieved the ultimate understanding, leaves the body and tries to become one with the universe. Leonard, I'm drowning. The time is not yet, and so it must be born anew in another body. To wait. Yeah. And there's supposed to be forgetfulness. But it is never complete. Leonard, is this you? Bridges, I am finally free. I know at last. I know. The guru showed me who I am. Who are you? I have been born again. Recreated. Although, uh, realistically, I never died. Yeah? Once again, I walk the world. I think. I dream. I create. But who are you? That is, who do you think you are? Oh, I know who I am. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I'm Leonardo da Vinci. All right, it's a free country. And the most elementary of all the rights we enjoy here is that of free speech. A man who wants to say he's Leonardo da Vinci, we certainly have to defend his right to say it. However, we also have the right to ask for proof, evidence, facts. And we shall do that in Act Two when I return shortly. familiar way to diagnose madness. Indeed, it's become a cliche. People claim to be Napoleon, or Julius Caesar, or George Washington, or Abe Lincoln. When someone insists, we usually place them in those institutions erected for the purpose. However, we never really come to grips with the basic problem. 
how do we know they are not telling the truth? We're even now attending such a situation. Who did you say you were? Leonardo da Vinci. I never heard of him. Oh, he was the greatest of all the Renaissance men. I still think one of the greatest painters, scholars, thinkers, designers, and vendors in all of history. I'm no closer. His uh, incarnation was from 1452 to 1519. His incarnation, huh? Yes. Ah, oh, Bridges. You don't believe me. No, I don't believe you. But it's true. If that's what you want to believe. But if it's true for me, it's also true for you. What's true for me? If I've come back, then so have you, my closest friend. Come back? From what? From your incarnation. I never knew I had one. Oh, you were my closest friend, my comrade in arms, my 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 collaborator. Well, Leonard, we may have worked one or two little rackets together. Yeah, but... how we degenerated from the brilliance of the Renaissance. As Leonard Kovacs and Bridges Barzell, we worked minor swindles and petty thievery. But as Leonardo da Vinci and Luca Pacioli, <laughs> we were men of genius. You know, you were the greatest mathematician in the world. I was? Well, don't you remember? Can I ask you something, Leonard? What have you been drinking? You can't remember how we worked together? Look, Leonard... Without you, I should never have been able to accomplish half of what I did. You know, Leonard, maybe a little fresh country air... You are never accorded the celebration you deserve. Well, you're part of the collaboration that somehow escaped the attention of history. But it wasn't my fault. I swear to you, it wasn't my fault. Sure. Sure, nothing was your fault. You don't hold it against me. No. It was your mathematical formulae, your calculations that enabled me to build mighty fortifications, reach out the entire shape of cities. Oh, work with me again, Luca. Sure, sure, Leonard. But I have you. taken some time off to refresh myself. You always called it frivolous. <laughs> but painting is also an art. I never said it was. You think every moment wasted which is not devoted to science. A science is your mistress. Look, uh, a shrew of a mistress. There are other things in life. Leonard, I think we better have a talk. Ah, you and your talk. I... I am painting her again. Who? <laughs> you know who? Her. She's here. The three of us are here. Zanobi's wife. Zanobi? Zanobia del Giaconda. You know him. He married that uh, Neapolitan girl, Lisa. The minute I laid my eyes on her, I knew I had to paint her. Okay, Leonard, okay. Luca, old friend, you... you have got that look in your eyes. Look, my name isn't Luca. It's Percy Reginald Barzell, also doing business as Bridges. Ah, now, now Luke. don't interrupt. I listen to you. I am not Luca Pachi, whatever his name is, and you are Leonard Kovacs. You were born in Brooklyn. You are not this Leonardo da Vinci, whoever he was. Now, is all that clear? Uh, you don't understand. I understand what to do with a nut. Now, there are those people who say go along with him, humor him. Not me. Won't be any good. So leave a snap out of it already, huh? Poor Bridges. You think I'm crazy? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Come, Bridges. Step in here. Where? I have a little studio. I fixed it up for myself. I have a something to show you. I want you to look at this. Now, Bridges. Do you call that? That was a canvas. You know, what artists paint on. And I could see that it was a picture of a woman. Kind of young. It wasn't finished. But it looked familiar. Very familiar. And then I knew what it was. Everybody in the whole world knew what it was. Even a mug like me. It was that painting they called the Mona Lisa. I don't get it. What is it you don't get? Look, I, I always knew you could draw pictures. 
But this thing. Now I know who this Da Vinci was. He was the artist that painted that Mona Lisa. <laughs> what? Well, I've been telling you. But he already done it. I know. Then why are you doing it again? Because I want to do it again. But it's already in some museum in France, the Louvre, wherever. I did two of them, you know? Yeah? You know you were there. Oh, boy. Haven't you imagined the impact on the world when this painting is shown? Another Mona Lisa. Another Da Vinci. <laughs> it will be worth millions. Oh, no, your coffee's ready, son. In a while, Madame Lisa. Sit. I want you to fall. Oh, but I... I have something to prove to our friend here. Uh, where is the tape recorder? Uh, ah, but turn it on. Remember? She always needed music to help her hold that expression. Uh, I just want to mix these pants. But I, I, I really have to be gone. Ah, look, uh, you were always bored by painting. No, 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 I really have to go. I have to meet this guy. Hey, it won't be long. Now, Madame Marisa, my... No, 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 not with your lips, with your... With your soul. Uh, you see, you see, look, old friend. In her face is that haunting, enigmatic charm. You mean to say that Dimple is posing for that picture? You call her Dimple if it pleases you. Oh, that's the man. In her present incarnation. But her master life was as Madonna Lisa Devi Giacomba. But she don't look nothing at all like the Mona Lisa. Oh, strictly speaking, neither did Madonna del Giaconda. The face that you look at is not the face that uh, I see. Yeah, but what I paint is the picture I see from the, the inner light. It is my own, my unique, my, my vision. Oh, I remember how we used to argue about art. It's good to have these thoughts again. Yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> Leonard, like I said, i got to meet this guy. You will be back. Oh, sure. 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 I'll be back. What was that to say? The guy had completely lost his mind. Poor Dimple. The next day she comes up to my place. She was almost in tears. Oh, you've got to help me, Bridget. You've got to. Well, Dimples, what can I do? Oh, you used to be one of the smartest guys on the street. Can't you think of something? Yeah, if only I could, but I don't know what. It's not bad enough he's bringing out of the Vinci, but I have to be the Mona Lisa. You're also in the after as an old buddy of his. Dimples, you have to face it. He's gone. Oh, no, you've got to help me. I call it your fault. My fault? Yes. If, if you hadn't introduced me to him, I'd never have met him, never have fallen in love with him, never have married him. I'd have married you and lived happily ever after. He's got to make up for it. You owe it to me. <laughs> I don't know if you ever win any arguments with dames, but I knew I had to do something. So I decided to get at the roots of the problem. Now, the whole thing started with this guru. Maybe that was the answer. So I tracked him down. He had this temple, you know? Well, not really a temple. It was more like a great big hall. Everybody sat around, and they cooked beans, and they meditated. Also, there were some people who were standing on their heads. Finally... I got to see the old boy himself. He was behind a big curtain. Ah, yes. Oh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Guru, if that's your name. Ah, what is your name? We listen to it and we do not hear it. We touch and do not find it. It is the red and the beauty. And eat it and you will not see it. Said, follow it and you shall not see it back. What did I get myself into? You seek any light on an answer. Yeah. What have you done to my boy? The words are spoken. They fly like swallows. Yesterday's rain clouds were in the west. Leonard Kovacs. And I want the truth. True words are not beautiful. Beautiful words are not true. You could slice it up any way you like. Ask this not of me. Speak rather with Look up, Pacioli. Oh, no, no, no. I've been through that bit. You may have convinced him he's Leonardo da Vinci. But let me tell you this out front. I know that I am not Luca Pacioli. A wise man does not know 
he who knows is not the wise man. You know something, Guru? We could keep this up all day. All I want to do is to try to make a certain little lady happy. Happiness comes from being, and being comes from non-being. Could we talk English? Now, what do you want with Leonard? I have returned Leonard to his master reincarnation. Let's stick to the facts. What's in all this for you? Who? Hi, Leonard. We are all reeds that blow in the wind, and we yearn for wisdom. But can it be heard in the songs of the swallows? It beats me. Wisdom is the air we breathe. Yeah, whatever you say. One thing I can't figure out. What's in it for you? Leonard doesn't have any real dough. You are wise. <laughs> and your eyes have seen it. Yeah. He has this Mona Lisa. Look, pal, let's lay it on the line. That thing he's painting, you know, that ain't the real Mona Lisa. That's my positive friend. <laughs> it is. Yeah, who says so? You would be surprised to learn how many would say so. He will behave. There are those who will clamor to own it. To own it? In other words, to buy it? Is he the exchange of gold for inspiration? Is the way the rich support the gifted? Bingo. And big casino. Just say that one shiny word and it all falls into place. Gold. Mr. Guru, I bow to one of the master hustlers of all time. Are we finally getting a little daylight in here? It's hard to say. Of course, that word gold, money, is what could make everything fall into place. But how? Is Leonard Kovacs really the reincarnation of Leonardo da Vinci? Is Dimples the reincarnation of Madonna Lisa del Giaconda? And, fight it though he will, is Bridges truly the reincarnation of Luca Pacioli? Three questions for Act Three in just a few minutes. who ever lived and is alive today managed to be born once. So that's no great accomplishment. The real trick is to be born twice. Well, we have the Guru Sri Huri Chundat Mukherjee working on it. And so far, he seems to be doing a pretty good job on Leonard Kovacs, the Mona Lisa. So that's the gimmick. He's Mona Lisa by... Leonardo da Vinci. Let's concentrate, Guru. You can convince my boy Leonard that he is the incarnation of Leonardo da Vinci. He knows how to draw and paint. He always did, and he's good. So maybe you can convince him that he's painting the Mona Lisa. The three wise man listens and sleeps. But before that happens, just answer me this. How are you going to convince everybody else? The nightingale warbled in the courtyard of the temple. A passing stranger has a stone in his shoe. In other words, you're not talking, huh? He who knows does not speak. He who speaks he does not know. But I know you're setting up a swindle. Friendship is the celestial manifestation of the eternal dove. Now, what are you driving at? Look up. Pacioli, these words are for thee. Oh, no. You dialed the wrong number there, Tom. I am not Luca Pacioli. Who is Luca Pacioli? Uh-oh. We look in the mirror, we see his shadow. And the foolish man points and says, Behold, his eye. Yeah. Well, it's been good talking to you, girl. You are Luca Pacioli to the incarnation of Leonardo da Vinci. If he believes you to be Luca, then this is the shadow he sees in the mirror. Tell me something, Brother Guru. As one hustler to another, 
Why is it so important for me to be this guy, uh, Luca Pacioli? Luca Pacioli is the alter ego of Leonardo. And the best. All then. Huh. Up to. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, I'm hanging in there. Not by much, but I'm in there. And I certainly hope you bring it off. And that everyone makes a buck. Now, obviously, the scheme called for this thing to be painted. And then to be sold as a genuine Mona Lisa. Okay. There could be millions in it. But how would you get it past the expert? Well, I knew an expert. And I decided to ask him. Now, hold the phone. I know what you're thinking. Where would I come off knowing an art expert, huh? Well, you see, one time a picture got stolen from this big gal and the punk that did it was in over his head. So he asked me to, uh, you know, kind of negotiate for him. And that's how I got to meet this Miss Threshold. Another Mona Lisa? <laughs> well, there's no record that Da Vinci ever painted another. But it could be possible. Anything could be possible. All right, now leave us say a guy comes to you and says, I got here a Mona Lisa that was painted by the old boy himself. What would happen? How could you tell it was real? Well, it would have to be in the style of Da Vinci. The techniques, the brushwork. Uh -huh. But of course... The painting would have to be very close to 500 years old. Yeah. And therefore, the canvas, the pigments, the oils would all have to show their great age and their scientific dating method. Well, is there a way that uh, you could counterfeit that? No. Well, perhaps. <laughs> to try to palm something off as an authentic Da Vinci is just too difficult. I see. Why, Bridget? Are you thinking of doing it? I went into an art store and I bought me a very good reproduction of the Mona Lisa by Da Vinci. And I studied it. Then I went back to Leonard's place. And there he was hard at work with dimples posing. And I studied what he was doing. It wasn't finished yet. But I could tell it was going to look just like the real thing. And I was starting to get just a little bit scared. I mean, maybe I didn't know all the answers. Ah, look, old friend. So you have come by to see the work, yeah? Mm. It goes, it goes. Yeah, it looks pretty good. <laughs> I have made a believer of you at last. You no longer come to chide me for wasting my time with the parap and drugs. Well, look, uh, Leonard, I hope it turns out okay. We need the money, Luca. Mm -hmm. The Medici was not as generous as I'd hoped. Well, he kind of rambled on, and I started feeling very bad. Because I got a nose for swindles. And I didn't see just how this one could ever come off. And yet... What did the guru have up his sleeve? What did he know that I didn't? I asked him to. I don't know, Bridget. It, it beats me. Is Leonard being set up? I don't know. And if he is, why? Uh, you wonder I'm scared? I mean, I can't figure it. I, I'm sorry I got you into all this. Look, I guess I should be rooting for him to fall flat on his face. Maybe even go to jail. That way he'd be out of the picture. Oh, you don't mean that, Bridget. I do, I do, but... Look, what more can I do? I don't know. We just have to hope for the best. She looks up at me and she said it with those big blue eyes. And I said to myself, what's the use? I'll give it another shot. So I went back to see the guru, and he was in great form as usual. Heaven and earth, uh, not human. <laughs> we regard all things as Straw dogs. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I, I was saying that very thing myself, Guru, just the other day. And so, my son, do you come again for enlightened men? No. No, this time I don't come for it. I have come to give a little bit of it. He who knows others is wise. But he who knows himself is enlightened. Now, leave me enlighten you on this little swindle of yours. What it's all leading up to is the sale of this picture of Leonard's, right? But even if you could kid people into thinking it looks just like Da Vinci's work, the mechanics of the thing are against you. 
Uh, 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 How are you going to make the paint and the canvas look as if it was 500 years old? The softest thing in the world. Overcome the hardest thing in the world. All of which means what? The gazelle races along the mountain slope. The turtle splashes through the mud. Skip it. Which means he has figured out that angle of it also. How was he going to pull off a swindle like this? Every day I went to the studio and I looked at the picture. It was coming along. I mean, I'm no critic. But even I could tell it was good. No, it, it was great. I kept comparing it to my copy of, uh, of the original. And I had to admit you couldn't tell the difference. I couldn't guess what would happen once the professionals took a crack at it. Then I got a call from my friend, Miss Threshold. He wanted to see me. What's happening, Bridget? With what? Uh, some time ago, we had an idle conversation, or so I thought. There's talk of another Mona Lisa. Oh? Is another swindle about to be perpetrated upon the art world, Bridges? I don't know. You don't know? What I mean is, I don't know if it's a swindle. A few weeks later, Leonard announced that he was just about finished with the portrait. And I have to admit, it was fantastic. I was at Leonard's place when the news broke on the radio. And now for a sensation that is sure to rock the world of art. A new painting by Leonardo da Vinci. It has been discovered by the famous guru, Sir Huri Chundat Mukherjee. This morning, your reporter was at a special press conference called by the guru. Ah, uh, yes. It is the Mona Lisa. But, uh, guru, it cannot be the Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa is hanging in the Louvre in Paris. Uh, Paris? The Louvre, uh, what are they? What are we? Illusions. This is the Mona Lisa. Freshly painted. Freshly painted? Is that what you said, Guru? Fresh as the morning rain. Fresh as the budding flower. But how can it be freshly painted if Da Vinci died about 500 years ago? He has been reborn. He lives again. Therefore, it is ordained he must work again, create again, be again. And so he is once again painting his masterpiece, the Mona Lisa. But what about the one that's in Paris? It is the same. If a man can be born again, why not a painting? <laughs> Especially one that is so filled with life. Is it not written? The end of the world is the beginning of the world. When is everyone going to see this Mona Lisa? We shall wait one week till the second day of May, on which day in the year 1519, Leonardo left this world. What you're saying is, he's back now. We go in order that we may return. We return in order that we may go. Yes. Yes, I think I'm getting the hang of it. Well, thank you, Guru. You heard the man. I guess it's all over now, Dimples. I mean, what can I tell you? I tried. I, I know you did, Bridget. How did you figure to make it go? Bridget, it's sold. Why do you say that? All you have to do is get enough people to believe it. Enough of the right kind of people. Well, yeah, but how? That shows you how I wasn't thinking. All during the week, the Guru's people started beating the drums. People were being given a special piece of the painting. People met and talked with the reborn Da Vinci. And people were convinced. I mean, they were these weren't just people, you know, they were they were people. If you know what I mean, you know what they call the beautiful people, the young people, the withered people. These were the what they call the taste makers, the trendsetters. They were the ones who told you what books to read, what shows to see. They were the gurus people. And through him, they had found, okay, let's call it enlightenment. Oh, yes, he is Leonardo. There is absolutely no doubt about it. Every one of us has a master identity. And I, 
help him find it. Like they say, the day dawned. They were going to take the painting from Leonard's house to the guru's place. Dimples, there's nothing more anybody can do. Why do you call me Dimples? Uh-oh. My real name is Lisa Del Giaconda. Oh, come on, Dimples. Not you, too. You never approve of me, Luca. You were jealous. You wanted him for yourself. Yeah. Well, I don't blame you, Dimples. The thing is working, and you can see a million bucks. That's why you went with him the first time, isn't it? But somehow, the million never came around. And this time, it won't either. Ah, look, uh, the first time King Francis paid 4,000 gold florins for it. Uh, what shall it be worth now? I looked at the picture. I had to admit it was just great. Yep, you could believe this was the way Da Vinci did it. But then, something bothered me. It, it, it wasn't much, just, just a little something, and I couldn't put my finger on it. But something, something was missing. No, something had been added. But what? Well, I went along to the guru's place, and I tell you, the thing was a sensation. People were buzzing and wooing and eyeing. And yet, they brought it off? No, Bridget. He hasn't brought it off. Oh, oh, it's you. Uh, uh, I was reading your lips. He almost did. But he forgot something. A tiny little something. Then I was right. He did something wrong. You've seen it too? What is it? Well, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. Think. Look at her face. Her forehead. That's it. Yes. He gave her eyebrows. That's what he did. And on the original, she doesn't have any. Of course not. All women, all wealthy women in the Italian Renaissance shaved off their eyebrows. Eyebrows. <laughs> Why, a woman of quality wouldn't be caught dead with them. That's what it is. And so we got him. He isn't Da Vinci. It isn't the Mona Lisa. Yeah. Poor Dimple. She's stuck again. Not everybody went home then and there. The professionals caught it first and started to smile. And while the guru and his crowd put up a good fight, they didn't have the right kind of ammunition. When the guru's followers saw that they were being laughed at, they turned on him and denounced him as a phony. Poor guru. Well, that's the way of the world, isn't it? It just keeps turning. This has been the story of a Renaissance genius. Or at least a swindle. Or was it a swindle? Based on his work, or was it his actual work? Was Leonard Kovacs an authentic genius in his own right, or was he actually the reincarnation of the great Leonardo? In these matters, we may quote the guru, the further one goes, the less one knows. Our cast included Mandel Kramer, Ian Martin, and Bryna Rayburn, the entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.